Hello. Recently I said uh, I wouldn't do any more marine radio topics. Well, sorry about that, but I thought I'd just show you this, as I think this is a... Well, it's related. It's somewhat interesting. Here's a little, uh, what's it called? SX Micro 90. Oh, I've had it for several years. It's been an absolute little cracker. And uh, I'm very pleased with it. As far as handhelds go. And I use this for a lot of testing and going out into the field and repairs and so forth. It's nice and neat and handy. As a little portable, I can recommend it. But just recently, it's played me up. And, uh, as I say, it's been working absolutely fine. And, um, but now when I turn it on, it comes on for less than a minute. The display goes. And uh, it doesn't do anything. Well, this is sort of strange. The battery indicator shows full charge. If I switch on, let's get close. Comes on. Now it's gone away. So what's happening to this thing? You can hear the squelch noise, but you can't do anything. Turn off, you wait a little while, turn on again. Same thing. So, I thought perhaps it's battery problems. I had a quick look in this and it's all surface mount. There's no way I'm going to... can even see what... well, no way, it's out, way beyond me. Might as well be on Mars. So I thought, is it battery problems? So I took the battery off. Uh, so look, I've got a meter here. The indicator shows absolutely full charge. Uh, which is positive, which is negative. There and there, I think. So if I get my hands out the way and bring that into view. Oh, I'm all fingers and thumbs this morning. We have 5.789, volts. Well, it's a bit down, but I don't know. Let's have an experiment. Okay, then, well, a very temporary cellar taped connections onto the back of the transceiver and connected it up to my variable power supply and I've set it up for 6 volts very carefully fraction under 6 volts and switch on and hey presto it stays on transmits does everything it should do Absolutely fine. And that's fractionally under 6 volts. But if I... I'll try not to knock anything. If I slowly reduce the voltage, only by a tiny little bit, look. And suddenly the display is gone. So it's... Uh, it's not very voltage tolerant, is it? So I think perhaps uh, battery, is, battery is the problem. So, as you can see, I just solid tape that on there. Not an easy thing. So, I'm assuming that this pack is 6 volts. Doesn't say anything anywhere. I had a quick look on the net. Sometimes it can be very useful and you can find all sorts of things. Circuits and all sorts of information. Other times you seem to get a blank, don't you? Um, and it's easier to do your own investigation. So I'm assuming it's six volts, I'm assuming they're NICADs. I let's have a look. There's some screws here, let's uh well we'll see how many cells we've got in there and we can soon work it out. But um just a one volt drop, in fact less than that, is enough to have this working and not working. So we'll investigate further. Okay well I've solved the mystery. I wrongly assumed this was six volts. Taking the case off and the little Sanyo batteries and there's one, two, three, four, eight. Eight at one point two volts each. This is nine point six, nine point eight volts. 
Ha 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 ha! So we've got battery pack problems. I suspect one of these has gone down. Anyway, I find that most encouraging. Certainly not going to buy another pack. We'll investigate these. Um, so the actual voltage is considerably down. That would explain an awful lot. An awful lot. In fact, it's very voltage tolerant that it actually worked down quite a percentage lower than it uh, was designed to. So we'll investigate these. Do they come out? Oh, yes. Right, I'll take this pack apart and we'll have a look. That's looking promising. Well, we got to this stage. I've cut the, the plastic off the battery plaque in order to get at the, the cells. And I've checked each cell individually, which is what you should do. Because they're all in series, get it in, in the picture. Because it's all in series, um, you only need one to go down and uh, it'll affect the whole pack of course. The one that's uh, got internal shorts um, is the one that has to work the hardest and ironically it's the one that gets the least charge. So uh, it's a bit like fairy light bulbs, one can cause havoc for the rest. Anyway I've done checks, we've got um, uh, 1.07 volts, 1.0 Two five volts. This one is 0.9 volts, so that's very suspect. 1.06 volts, and then on this side, we've got 1.05 volts, or three rather, 1.03. Nothing on this cell. Watch what I'm doing. And 1.03 on that one. So we've got two, possibly three cells gone down. Well, I can either buy a new battery pack. Certainly not going to do that. I could buy individual NICAD cells or pull another pack apart and replace them. Don't fancy doing that either because you've got to get it all back into the flipping case. I'm going to spark them up. I'm going to, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm going to take a high voltage capacitor or high capacity capacitor, slap it across the 12 volts and um, watch the polarity and uh, spark these up. And sometimes it's enough, uh, enough shock to get them going. What happens is you get internal whiskers in, internally and uh, a high current discharge will sometimes burn them off. I've seen some idiots put uh, battery packs on MIG welders, the whole pack. Well, you know, you're, you're doing habit to all the batteries. That's a redneck, I think you call it, way of doing a job. You've got to actually tackle the cells that are, that are iffy. So it's definitely that one. And it's most definitely that one there. You have to be careful because if you just get one cell, which is what normally happens, you've only lost 1.2 volts. But sometimes it can reverse polarity because of the, volt, the batteries either side of it. So effectively you've lost 2.4 volts. So uh, problems compound themselves. Anyway, we spark it up and... Uh, I think I'm in with a chance. Let's give it a go. This is my usual approach to the problem of dealing with cells that are completely gone down or extremely low. Once you've identified which one it is and observed the polarity, I've got a 12 volt car battery here and I've got a large capacitor with a couple of probes uh, connected to it. I nicknamed it my uh, Nazareth capacitor because if nothing will, if this won't bring them back to the dead, then nothing will. It's 16 volts, but it's 68,000 microfarads. <laughs> that sort of should give them a surprise. So, observing polarities, we put negative on negative and positive on positive. And you usually get a little spark or a crack. So, let's charge the capacitor up and what we do is we put these probes across the defective um, the defective battery and that discharge should burn out the whiskers in the defective battery so we charge it up you heard it crack it's charged up observe the correct polarity positive negative that one do it a couple of times Sometimes three times. 
and if that hasn't cured it it's a cell replacement so we'll put that on charge that individual cell on charge till it comes up to the same level as the others and we'll see if we won with this doing it this way you can only hope for about 70 80 percent of the original capacity of the pack anyway we shall see Fortunately, I've resurrected this little uh, this little booty. It's had uh, three discharge and charges, and uh, it's holding up really nicely now. Um, transmit at full power, and um, I got away with that. So an hour's work, and uh, very nice indeed. Really chuffed. Saved myself a bubble too as well. Okay, no more marine band <laughs> topics. I promise. <laughs>